Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing EOS Island of Angels by King Raccoon Games. Now, this is going to be a Kickstarter game. I'll have a link in the description down below. And this is very much a prototype. What you see over here, the styrofoam boards, the player mats, the cards, all those things, prototype components very much left, right, and center. And rules perhaps still subject to change, of course, prototype and all of that. Now, I'm not going to be doing a full rule, rules overview. There's way too many intermingling parts and edge cases and things to be aware of in the game. But the general idea of the game is you're trying to earn as many victory points as possible. And one of the big triggers for victory points is going to be earning chronicles in the game. You're going to have a chronicle track where you're going to be earning points as well as triggering the end of the game as enough chronicles are earned. Now, the way you earn chronicles is going to be well, a little bit all over the place. There are a lot of pathways to victories in this game. There's going to be supporting the forces, where if you continue to continuously support the forces, which happens whenever you earn extra resources above your max capacity, well, then you'll eventually earn a chronicle there. You're going to earn a chronicle for the glory track. Whenever you engage in combat with these various little demons over here, you're going to earn glory. And when you get high enough on the track, you'll earn a chronicle there. Additionally, there's going to be various explor exploratory, exploratory points, wards. There's going to be additional exploratory points around the various map that will be tends to be different game to game. There's going to be standard ones printed on the board, as well as these various cards that you can go ahead and put out, all of which give you different ways to earn Chronicles as well, little miniature challenges as you choose to interact and engage with them. And then the most common way, the most common way you're going to earn Chronicles is going to be through the raising of angels and the killing of demon lords. There's going to be little miniature demons you have to engage with throughout the game, but demon lords are going to be a whole different thing that require a lot more energy and might to deal with and take down. And there's going to be angels that can be raised as you slowly make your way towards the inner islands. You can raise the variety of angels on those, well, island points in order to get more chronicles over there, as well as earning in-game abilities. That's going to be the primary driving force of EOS, but past that, we haven't really gone to the way the game actually plays out. And the way that's going to play out is going to be a bit of an action selection mechanism where you're going to be, basically, every player is going to have their own faction and their own ship. I have a variety of player ships over here. We'll go through them. They're all different, giving you different ways that they upgrade totally asymmetric factions and asymmetric ships, which will combine a faction and a ship and that will be the way you go through the game. But along the way, what you're doing every single game is you're going to be placing various action markers across your crew and or taking a recall action and activating your ship instead. So you're slowly activating your crew to get the various benefits on all the crew. And those benefits will range from upgrading the crew more to raising the morale because you need crew members at maximum morale in order to raise an angel because that's you got to be pure of soul or whatever it is you want to go there. You can get additional benefits, such as how you actually move and navigate your ship around the board, which is important to both interact with the various story points, as well as to interact with the various center points and to actually engage with the angels and raising the angels over there. And then you'll have a whole bunch of other things, such as increasing your might, increasing your money. You're going to have a treasure that gives you money, a scout, a whole bunch of different tracks and ways that your actual board plays out here. So that's the, the primary idea of EOS. You place an action marker, you take a bunch of benefits, you raise various stats, you increase the efficiency of your crew members. You're going to have a first officer which you're going to upgrade ranks whenever you do that, which means each of your crew members is going to get progressively more efficient. Because whenever you activate a crew, you choose how much to pay to take all the benefits of that crew. You basically, over here, we have the scout, where you can either pay six money and draw one ship card and navigate that way, or you can pay 10 money and navigate with three ship cards, giving you a lot more choice in terms of how you navigate. But as you, you have to actually unlock those abilities in this game. Your, your various crew members are all going to start with their various restraint. They're only going to have the first action available. And you're going to have to use your first officer to slowly upgrade them throughout the game. So everything you do in EOS is designed to make you better. Everything you do is designed to increase the efficiency of your engine, to level up your stats, and to boost the way you interact and engage. You'll have a, what is it, treasure master, quartermaster. You're going to have a quartermaster who's going to upgrade your actual ship. You have ships full of a variety of upgrades, and you, as you activate and upgrade your ship, you'll get a whole bunch of benefits there, perhaps one-time benefits, perhaps access to the secret passage, whole bunch of ways you can further engage in the world of EOS Island of Angels. Now, this is a very high-level overview. I'm covering the general, how you win, how you get points, general turn structure. I'm not going deep down into the weeds because it would be a lot longer, and let's use this, I guess, interlude to move on to the review part of this video. And so, Let's go through what I liked, didn't like, and can see others not liking about EOS Island of Angels. And to begin with, the art of the game. Now, there's going to be, in the base game at least, there's going to be six asymmetric factions, all giving you different ways to engage with the world. And over here, we have the Noom over here. We have the Noom, we have the Kusan, we have the the queen, Queendom of 
Mess, Mess Pen Pan. I don't know how to pronounce these various names. And then we're going to have a variety of other factions over here. We just have, you know, six different factions set up, all with different art and character to the factions. And the way they, we have these little squid people, the Quanon, which is amazing. So yeah, you're going to have a ton of gorgeous art in the game. If you look past the prototype part of the styrofoam boards that are warping a bit, very much the art in the game is really solid. I really enjoy all the character portraiture over there. The multiple paths to victory mostly is going to be a benefit. And I say mostly because ultimately you are going to have to engage with killing demons, killing demon lords, or raising angels. That's not really negotiable. There's not going to be enough chronicle points to be earned elsewhere unless you really try as hard as possible to not engage at all with the angels and the demons, and other players let you do so. But Primarily, you're going to have a variety of ways you can actually earn those those chronicles. Like I said already, you have the, the Support the Forces track, you have the Glory track, you have uh, Angels and Demons, you have Angels and Demon Lords, you have the various interaction map points on the board. There's going to be a variety of different ways you can choose to engage in the world. This is a game where you you can go through the entire game and not engage with any single one of those elements. I could go through the game and not raise a single angel. I can go through the game and not kill a single demon lord. You usually have to do at least one of those two, though. But past that, there are a lot of pathways to victories. Which which of these story points do you choose to engage with? Their very first turn of EOS is going to involve picking one of the four corners of the board and choosing where your ship begins, which story point you're close to, and perhaps which story point you want to go through. And some of them are going to be easier than others, although they're all going to require a degree of sacrifice, time, investment of energy, as they should be. The Chronicles are going to be the biggest part of the game, but there's a lot of pathways to victories in the game. And the leveling up everything is everything I like in board games. Whenever I tend to like board games that have powers and abilities, and this game gives that to you in a variety of different ways. You can have a giant deck full of cards that will all give you different journeys, each of them giving you a different degree of how far you can move and what benefit you get along the way. Look at this, we have Sunken Treasure. Our ship can move one space, but we're going to get 12 coins. We have Protected Lagoon. We can't actually go anywhere. We move zero spaces, but we do get to upgrade our ship. There's going to be all these different ways, each of you giving a little bit of a taste and flavor to the world, and that's where upgrading your scout is very helpful, because if your scout allows you to draw more ship cards, it gives you more choice as you navigate the world. You're also going to have your various faction starting cards that are incredibly powerful when you choose to use them, specific navigation cards that don't count against your hand limit and give you different ways you can, again, break the rules of the game, and that's all before we get into the, my favorite part of the game, which is going to be the ship upgrades and the actual factions themselves, because they're all asymmetric, left, right, and center. They all give you different ways. You have the Kusan that are constantly engaging in the luck of the game, constantly rolling dice every time they upgrade the morale of one of their one of their units. Each of the factions is going to bring their own different taste and spin to the way the game plays, a slight different competitive advantages, still giving you different ways you can pursue winning the game, but giving you powers and abilities and different choices in the way you choose to engage, in the way you choose to upgrade your ship, to raise the morale of your factions, to raise the ranks of your factions. Because it's constantly a puzzle of, I want to go here so that I can do this, but if I do this first, then maybe I can get that instead. All these things are giving you tons of different ways to interact. And then your ship, each ship is going to give you a unique sequence of the way you can actually go through the upgrades. You can upgrade in any order, but they're going to give you different options in terms of the, the specific type of ship you have. And then you combine any one of the different ships with any one of the different factions and you have a unique puzzle to engage with every single time you play EOS. And then we have the Demon Lords and the Angels. The Demon Lords each presenting a puzzle, a way they negatively impact the game state until they are killed. And then the Angels, which will give you either permanent ongoing effects. You'll have these Angels that you go ahead and flip them over and you raise an Angel. And you can go ahead and get permanent abilities. You can get ongoing benefits. You can get one powerful one-time benefits that you have over here. Action. Once per game. Raise seven ranks. That's huge. You get that at the right time and you can power up and level up your entire forces and so there's a lot in EOS in terms of the, the powers, the abilities, the way you can level up everything in order to get at everything else. And then that all lends itself to the variability of the game. There's tons of cards, player, there's cards, there's players, there's ships, there's missions. You have the whole little stack of little miniature missions you can assign players in the advanced mode, which will give them another way to explore, another way to choose which pathway they're pursuing in order to gain the Chronicles, in order to gain, gain victory points in this game. Every single game of EOS is going to be totally different in the way you approach it because of the board state changing, because of your missions changing, because of the combination of what you have, because of the various navigation cards you draw. Every game is a slightly different puzzle. Same core mechanisms at play, but a totally variable and different experience. And then finally, I like the incentive to help others in this game. See, there's going to be constantly, you're going to be constantly being, being attacked by demons in this game. The demon lords are the big bads you have to deal with and take care of. But there's going to be miniature demons constantly attacking your player boards, overwhelming and subduing you, stopping you from utilizing your actions or upgrading your actions or your morale in this game. And so you 
obviously want to slaughter those demons. Now you do have warriors. Every faction is going to have a warrior. And again, same as before, every warrior is going to be slightly different because of the asymmetrical nature of the factions. But then whenever you earn your swords to go ahead and attack demons, you have a choice. You can attack your own demons, which only costs one sword per demon, but it's going to give you a glory every single time you do it. Or you can spend two swords per demon if you are attacking other players' demons. If you're enabling and helping, not enabling, if you're helping the, uh, the enemy players tackle and attack their own demons, you're going to get a victory point and a glory. So you have to spend two swords, but you get much more benefits, much more in terms of benefits, because you're actually earning victory points, which is how you're ultimately going to win the game. That's one way. And then additionally, every single faction has a way that they can build, not just on their ship, but they can earn an unlock for their actual player board, where whenever they go ahead and activate one of their main other four units, they're going to have a benefit where they can give somebody else a catch-up mechanic and earn a benefit in return. So perhaps you, as the player who has the fewest glory or the fewest points, maybe I let you draw extra journey cards, but then I'm going to get you know, two glory or two points as a result. There's that little trade-off of you're constantly rewarding. Once you've upgraded it, you have this benefit of rewarding the player in last place while helping yourself. And if all the players are doing that, that means the players in last place have this slight catch-up mechanic that keeps them in the game. As far as things I didn't like about EOS, there's going to be a few things. And to begin with, and this is very much a prototype type of critique, could be non-issue, could be a non-issue in the final game, but this game needs a good player aid. Absolutely. The amount of symbology in this game, it, it takes, I mean, this is a game, we'll get to it more in a second, but this is a game where you need multiple plays under your belt before you stop checking the rule book to read what one symbol means versus another. Now, some are easier than others. Coins are coins, glories, glories, victory points are victory points. Those things will tie nicely to the map, but there's a ton of symbology in this game and it needs a good player aid so that you're not constantly passing around the rule book as people try to figure out both the cards in their hand, their individual player boards. This is a game that really, I'm saying this for the third time now, really needs a good player aid. Now, along with that, the game is messy. And some of that, I think, is going to be prototype concerns. We'll get to that in a second. But some of that is just going to be the nature of the game. The pure game state of what it's doing is fairly simple. You take an action, and you lock up a crew member. Eventually, you withdraw. You take a ship action. You restock your actions, and you prep to go. All those things are solid and simple. But then all the little interactions, all the ways something interacts with another, all the journey cards, and navigating through threat, and trying to figure out which upgrades and which story points, every single one of these little uh, map points that you have might present a different set of rules that you have to engage with and that gets to the part where some of this might be prototype issues but we in our in our games we've had some cards that we didn't know how they worked and so in our case it was simple enough we simply discarded that card and moved on to the next card and called it a day if i didn't know what a card did we just moved on to the next one but there's going to be some of those potential lack of clarifications and hopefully this is all resolved in the prototype phase again you know it's it's a prototype we have a half a rule book it's all printed it still needs to be formatted lots of things can can and i expect will be improved but i'm still calling them out as things that i experience while playing through EOS. But even once, even once all of those are resolved, I still think the game at the end of it is going to be on the messy side, which is worth noting. Messy in a good way. It all combines to give you powers and abilities and things to upgrade and things to play off one another, but still something worth addressing. As far as what I can see others not liking, there's going to be a few things. And, and to begin with, is not really a a thing that you won't like, but more just a uh, worth mentioning, which is the balance of this game I can't speak for at all. This is a game where I don't know if I'd be able to confidently speak about the balance uh, until I'm 15, 20, 30 plays in because of the nature of everything combining in different ways, it is absolutely possible that the ship, the Wanderer of the Sea, combined with Tukusan, is going to result in a broken combination that you'll have to house with. I don't know. I don't know those things. There's a lot going on in EOS. Now, I will say that I haven't noticed anything obvious on my end. At no point in my plays have I sat there and said, wow, your faction looks completely overpowered. Or more specifically, I, I have. I have been jealous of the fact that your warrior is so much stronger than mine. But then again, my scout's stronger than yours, so it all balances out. Think of, of Scythe and the Scythe player boards. It has that element where, yes, one individual action might be stronger, but across the board, looking at any individual faction, I haven't felt that they were imbalanced. But again, that combination aspect... It's worth noting that I'm not promising you a balanced game here at all. It seems to work, but I'm just noting there's a lot going on in terms of the powers and abilities and balancing all of that. And then secondly is going to be first come, first serve on the missions. These missions over here are only one player can actually complete each of them. And if you're progressing across the map aggressively to get to one and someone else gets there before you, that can be a little underwhelming as you have to figure out where to reroute and how to now engage with the, with the map instead. It's not a game where you're aggressively getting in each other's ways. And I don't mind the fact that you might get something I don't, but it could be frustrating to you if you find yourself spending three, four navigation cards 
and then having someone get there first anyways. And then lastly, at higher player counts, this game can run long. Eos is a game that works surprisingly well at two players, because it's mostly about developing your faction and minimal interaction on the world map. There will be a little less interaction, so if you want more interaction in your games, then yeah, I would say going for three players is probably the sweet spot. Hitting four players in Eos, and I don't even know what the player count is, it goes to... I don't even know how high it goes, I've only played till 4, so whatever player count it goes up to, but it's, at 4 players this game can run a little long. Once players know it and they're up and running, I don't think it's that bad, but our first game was at 4 players and it definitely did ra run a bit long. For me, I think 3 and 2 were actually the sweet spot, although I'm more than willing to dive back in at 4 players with people who actually know the game. As far as final thoughts and rating on EOS Island of Angels, EOS is an easy game for me to like. I tend to like powers and abilities, upgrading, stats, uh, cards, uh, left, right, and center, this game has all that. Recently, I reviewed Three Tail, another Kickstarter, and I basically jokingly refer to it as a stat building the game. In a complimentary way, I like stat building. And EOS is no different. EOS is also stat building the game. Everything you do allows you to level up your stats to do more in the game. Now, where EOS differs from Three Tail, for better and for worse, is in the complexity of what you're doing with those stats. Stats. Whereas Three Tail is a very light and simple dive once you figure out the stats and you're going into it, it's a simpler game and a more accessible game. EOS gives you more complexity. Complexity that makes those initial games a little harder to get into. I would say it wasn't until our third game that I really stopped checking the rulebook to figure out the exact sequence of the actions and how the ship resolves, all of that stuff. But that complexity also comes with the fact that there's more going on, there's more strategic depth, there's more choices, and there's more to think about as you go through EOS Island of Angels. This is a 4 to 5 for me. My rating skills in the description down below, but a 4 is a great game, one that I've really enjoyed. EOS is a little on the messy side, can run a little long at higher player counts, and does need some prototype-ish things cleaned up a bit, but past that, what I'm left with is a game with powers and abilities, and upgrading things left, right, and center, which is all I'm really looking for in a game. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful in some way, and as always, have a good one.